Hi everyone, I'm Marla Miller from MarlaMiller.com presenting our 60th Quick Query Critique Letter. Uh, let's see, a couple of things on the site for those of you who are interested in blogging. Um, again, just to let you know that um, I'm interested in rotating bloggers through, but not bloggers who are only promoting their own work. I'm interested in bloggers who offer something on their websites to writers on the road to publication or to the writing community in general. That can be something that you're doing in nonprofit. That can be an extension of, of the topic of your book. Uh, that maybe um, is where the roots of your writing um, can be found, uh, such as our memoirist blogger, Shirley, who uh, developed this incredible website called um, 100memoirs.com because 99 just aren't enough. And so you can go on that website and learn all kinds of stuff about memoir writing and interviews with um, with memoirists. So um, it's that kind of thing that I'm looking for and not just a promotion of, of your work. Um, so if that sounds like you, make sure that you contact me. Okay, let's get to this query letter. <clears throat> um, dear Agent, Nadia, an immigrant struggle for self-identity, follows the life path of a Polish Catholic girl, Nadia Zygmunt. The story begins in Nazi-occupied Warsaw in 1939. Nadia is 11 years old when she discovers her parents are harboring Jews. She helps her mother care for Jewish children hidden in their attic until her father can produce forged identity papers for their escape. Suspecting his underground activities, the Nazis break into his grocery store and shove him into a coal bin in the market's basement. Finding nothing, they leave him to mend his wounds. Between 1939 and 1944, Nadia changes from an innocent child to a shrewd freedom fighter. Her work for the Polish resistance with her boyfriend, Heinrich, gives her a sense of purpose. When the war ends, she marries him and immigrates to Detroit. He focuses on fitting into his new country and living the American dream. Assisting him with his endeavor endeavors isn't enough for Nadia. She feels emotional abandoned and eases her loneliness by dwelling on her childhood friendships and losses. She fantasizes about Marcus, a kind, gentle Jewish refugee from Warsaw, whom she met on the ship to America. When she realizes she will never bear children, her disappointment escalates, manifesting bursts of anger at her husband with his insensitive demands. In 1967, the Detroit race riots, which occurred shortly after Heinrich's death, reignite the terror she experienced as a child. She hides under the bed, wears the same clothes day after day, fails to eat, and won't answer the door until a health department nurse gains her trust. Nadia is hospitalized for what now is referred to as post-traumatic stress disorder. Once she was well, she regains a sense of purpose. Using her gardening skills that at one time were only a hobby, she organizes a community garden to heal the polarized relationships between blacks and whites. When the Detroit newspapers broadcast her role in the project's success, they highlight her past wartime heroism. Marcus, now a journalist for the New York Times, contacts Nadia when he reads about her accomplishments. I've been a community health nurse for four years, most of it in Detroit metropolitan area, and have professional experience in treating the mentally ill. This book is a composite memoir of several patients traumatized by either World War II atrocities or Detroit riots. The American Journal of Nursing and Nursing 2004 through 2011 have published my short creative nonfiction stories. Three were contest winners, four accepted works await publication in the coming months. The completed 116,000 word manuscript of Nadia, an immigrant struggle for self identity Identity is available upon request. Thank you for your time and attention. Best regards. And this uh, writer is also a nurse. Okay, um, a couple of things right off the bat. I love the way, and again, I post this on the site. I love the way she opens with the title of this book and she closes with the title of this book. And that's just really good habit to get into, whether it's fiction or nonfiction. Just remind us of this book's title uh, in the beginning. You know, can even thump it once in the middle and once at the end. Um, so that's good. The second thing that I enjoyed um, is her writing style. She's a competent writer that's quite clear. So I have no issue with that at all. The issue that I have, though, is um, following the, um, the through line of this narrative. It reads like it could be a novel. She doesn't identify it as um, a memoir in the body of the letter. She told me ahead of time that it was. Uh, but didn't identify it in the body of the letter until the very end. I would have thought this was a novel if I was reading it with no prompts. Um, 
And so then, if it is a memoir, I guess I have the the um, the, the um, issue that I have is, who are we following? Um, we're following Nadia. Um, and so, who is Nadia? If this is a memoir, then this is a real person. Is this this writer? Um, is this someone that this writer knew very well? Is this someone that this writer perhaps met while she was working in mental health? Um, so I'm not sure. Um, I, I kind of lost the focus of this story because uh, it's it's not nailed in this query letter. Even though, and let me just say this, even though I think that this letter is um, offers a tremendous amount of um, information about what this book might read like. It's just that this book reads like Nadia's memoir or a novel about Nadia. If this is a collection about atrocities that happened both in World War II and then also the Detroit riots, I don't see that here at all. I see this as a story about one girl whose um, uh, experience, traumatic experience as a child was replicated in her adult life. That's what I see. Um, I also see a romance. Um, that this is a um, Nadia is a woman who finds maybe her true love later in life when this uh, when this um, Jewish reporter who she knew during the resistance movement um, discovers her story. Um, so do you see? I'm I'm just not sure where the lens is on this. Um, if this is a memoir of several people, I think it needs to be reflected in this query letter um, because she says it's several patients traumatized by either World War II or um, uh, the Detroit riots. So that's about the best that I can do given um, the words that are on this page. But I want to thump the fact that um, this is an engaging story and um, if this query letter is reworked so that we really appreciate the um, parameters of this story because right now I, she says it's one thing but I only read it as the other which is just a story about Nadia. Um, so if, if um, this story um, is a collection then we really need to know that in the memoir because remember what a memoir oftentimes what agents um, who rep memoirs want is they want a book proposal not all the time um, but oftentimes they want a book proposal and in that book proposal there's going to be a chapter outline of each chapter so who are the other people survivors that we're going to be reading about in this story which is titled Nadia okay Nadia so if it's an immigrant struggle, then don't confuse us and tell us that it's a, a, a combination of um, stories, a composite of stories about several people. Um, if this is a composite memoir, I don't know what that is. Um, and I don't know that I've ever heard of that. So um, if it's a composite memoir with Nadia being the fulcrum or Nadia being the representative of all the composites, I think that's a problem. So um, you might want to look at, at um, how it is that you're pitching this memoir. Um, if it were just Nadia's story, uh, you know, I'd want to read more for sure. I'd at least ask this writer for the first couple of chapters. Okay, I hope that that's helpful. And um, until the next time, be well. Keep writing.